Hi, it's quiet now. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> uh, they put you, I don't know if they're doing some fire alarm testing, but that is what that beautiful uh, echoing sound was a moment ago. So we are paused, we paused it and we're back. It wasn't that long, but I'm gonna flip around if you're just tuning in. Hi, Marissa, nice to see you. Hi, it's Kate. Nice to see you. Uh, Kate, Hi. how's your progress I'm working coming? On it. Here, I'm working. Ooh, you're doing a great job. I'll be there. You'll be there for sure. I just want to show that I started with drawing it out, and then I thought maybe I'll uh, I'll go with mountains. Yeah. Yes, I could make it definite, and I could make it, but it seemed to be a little bit off my mood today. I don't know. Yeah. It did not allow me. So this was more uh, into what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. So my plan is to take, like this one is a small size. Mm -hmm. I could take a bigger size later mm -hmm. and could make like bigger strokes, mm -hmm. let's say in the spots that I need. More. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but also I thought we could work on it for how much, five more minutes? And then do the printing, or we could just move to printing. Yeah, again. well, we can. I'll I'll cut maybe another like I think for another ten just show some yeah. some on here. I think I'm. You can see my work. Yeah. So I'm I'm colored this into the blue, um, and then I will put the lines to kind of make some like detail on the iris because that's always the most interesting part of an eye, right? So what I did is I actually while the fire alarm was blaring, I um. Put the uh, I put Sharpie over it so I can see the detail I'm doing and I want it to kind of like almost have like a little like sunburst effect on it so I'm gonna start from this way in so I'm focusing on like the direction that I'm putting in and I don't want it to look like too much not like an eye maybe that'll happen i think it'll probably look striped that's fine uh it'll be really fun to see the result because it's really hard to see it while you are cutting yeah out. that's true too so in my thinking i would need to decide what i want to do here mm -hmm. and that would be overlapping with yeah. probably trees or something i don't know yeah and you can yes. also always like print it once see how it looks wash it off and then print mm -hmm. and then continue to carve that's another great idea to do in case you want to know if your um, lines are too shallow or not deep enough. That's a good trick. So it's so I funny how these hours go by so fast. Mm. <laughs> I, I never, when people do not plan timing for their mm -hmm. painting, they think that it's just five minutes, they nope. do. No, nope, it never. might take longer. Oh, but it actually would take me five minutes when I started, like when I started uh, getting into arts, I was not in the condition to do anything mm -hmm. for a long period of time. So it would actually take a very short yeah. time. But if it's something like this, I would never call it a five minute drawing. No, I would always it's... try and do some some more um, it looks like a drawing but it's not it's kind of the combo of like drawing and carving mm -hmm. and that's why i like it because you can get these really strong um lines right away or you can um just kind of add in so much detail to get all the other bits in there but you kind of take your time slow especially you get one shot. If you miss it up, if you mess it up, you gotta adapt to adding more. And then we could just cut out the whole piece out. Yeah, and that's that's the thing painted. too. Painted. Yeah, <laughs> you could always do that as well. There's some artists with their collage work and their lino cut. Or not collage. Why are we talking about collage? With their lino cut work, um, that they'll just carve out more of a bigger piece and then add paint to them after. Um, something you could always do too. Like say if I wanted this certain parts to be another color after the fact i could take an exacto knife and cut out certain sections and then ink those separately put them back together and then put my paper on top and roll it um, getting different different techniques down on my my ink so, um, how's your pencil on there Ooh, not bad <laughs> it holds it holds that's good <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to just carve everything out. 
Um, with this one, probably I would need to make one print and see if it's I think printing so. the right way and yeah. what I need to deep uh, go a bit deeper and deeper. Yeah, and you're always like you can always do that and give it a wash. So it's a little tricky doing um, it here because we don't have running water at Upbeat and we also don't have it at uh, Studio Central. So using wipes, baby wipes or Lysol wipes are really good to clean up your print in the meantime. Um, if I'm ever printing at Studio Central, because we actually have a large um, printing press there, it's like a tabletop one, so you can use it to print, like, um, make sure you have even distribution on, like, printing, say, a, a larger piece. I think it's up to 8 by 10 or, or 11, 11 by 9 size. Um, but that's great. And then when I'm done, I'll actually just put my art pieces that my cut prints or my reliefs I'll put them in a bag and then I'll bring them home and wash them just so I can make sure that they stay clean because uh, if there's like a, a ink buildup then that might alter how your print looks in the end yeah I mean we can both even like with whatever we have do an ink roll just to see what were certain things or even not even print it, but see what it looks like. Because I'd like to know how this iris looks. Um, also, this is in the fashion of you, Kate. Mm -hmm. I got these pink pieces on Amazon. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it was actually in a set that came with a tool. Not these tools that we have here. Uh -huh. But I think for the set, it had... Ooh, I want to say like 10 pieces of this pink fab, like pink rubber material. And it's not bad and at all. Tool. And it wasn't bad, no. Mm. Um, I think the most expensive one would be like this type of, like mm. this one, because you can get it at Artist's uh, Artist Emporium, where it's really even, you could use like a pink eraser, one of those like school erasers you could use for those too. Oh no. <laughs> I think they're cancel, doing, cancel. I think they're doing fire alarm testing and no one got a memo. <laughs> Cuz I also can't hear what they're saying. No. Can I have your attention, oh. please. We have to get the alarm. Mm. Have alarm be false. Mm. Thanks for returning to work. Thanks. We didn't think you. Can I have your attention, please. Oh no. <laughs> we have to get the alarm. Found the alarm to be false. Thanks for returning to work. Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> oh, someone's awesome. having a heyday going and pulling the alarms. <laughs> so what I'm planning to do, I don't know if it turns out that way, but mm -hmm. since I got the mountains, I could cut out bigger shapes for the trees. That yeah, the tops, yeah. If I get to that part. Yeah, and the thing is also too, like we were saying before, you can always do it in layers. So like. You could have like a whole mountain scene with like an island in front, mm -hmm. print that off maybe in like a blue or something, and then you could make another carving of like a tree layer, and then ink those in green. Oops, is our vacuum working? Yeah. Good. <laughs> I spilled some stuff on the floor. Yeah, after the workshop, uh... <laughs> You can find lots of stuff on the floor. Oh, I thought you were going to say, you can find, after the workshop, you can find the vacuum in the closet. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'll clean up. <laughs> no, I did not mean that. <laughs> yeah, there's always, that's part of art making. There's always things that fall. It's a big part of art making, and yeah. it's a big part of what we do in this store here. Yeah. Because we have demos, mm -hmm. and demos could be all kind of... Yeah. Well, artists try their best to not leave weird things on the floor, definitely, but yeah. it, it happens. It happens. That something falls on the floor. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, we just need to get to vacuum. It's our Friday afternoon activity. <laughs> yeah. Well, we we'll try to do it more often than just Friday. <laughs> oh, this is true. <laughs> don't, don't listen to me. <laughs> We're doing it more. <laughs> it's always hard to like film yourself doing this because I feel like I always try and stick my head in close to see and then you just see the back of my head on camera. <laughs> oh, 
we have a, another special guest with a question or a comment. Their name is um, oh, 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 Ollie. 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 <laughs> um, and they say, I can't wait to see the results. Now I really want to make prints. Well, awesome. gotta come by, make some prints. Have some beautiful things done. You can print them a bunch of times. If you get a oil-based ink, so the ones we have here today are water-based, but if you get an oil-based ink, you can print like on things like, um, I know some people use those to print on like clothing. Uh, you can also do like a note, a notebook. If someone wants a print, on a closing, we have an artist who did their own prints. Ooh, that's true. I uh, should actually get up and bring one of them. That would, well, when I'm when I'm printing, um, the I have another example to print too, just in case we didn't finish these in time. So once I'm setting up to print that, you can probably grab those and we can show just an example of like all the how versatile this is. Like you can put a piece of art or something that you drew and the different iterations that it comes through. Um, and you can print on so many different things. Oh my, oh. oh. <laughs> that thing's over there. <laughs> the soundtrack to this workshop is just <laughs> laughing. <laughs> and mm -hmm. you know, you think you can do things the same way when you're watching when not watched. Mm -hmm. It's hard. So uh, when I started making lives, I realized I cannot focus the same way. Yeah. Well, I realized it was definitely known, it's had known trickier. before. But yeah. it's, the mind does not work the same direction and you're trying to talk. Mm -hmm. So if you ever see art making in progress, uh, a person can be focused that much that does not see anything around. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so my focus is stretched a little bit, maybe not even a little bit. So what you can see, exact lines are reachable, but it takes uh, some time to get used to it, and it's it's not there yet completely. Mm -hmm. So I'd say it's it's a challenge every single time yeah. to actually talk and do something at the same time. I agree. <laughs> so I started going with images that I do not need to oh to think focus of focus too much on, except yeah. for today. Uh, well, it's it's not the image that I need to focus at first. Then I need to focus when I get things to, mm. done together. So basic cutting out is not much of it. That's true, yeah. But then I would need to go through like areas and see where I want to uh, to widen, to mm -hmm. deepen, and whatever I need to do. Well, now, as uh, folks can see as I'm cutting, I decided as I go that I'm adding like now some like circles in the the pupil because it looked just a little bit too blank for me and too simple. So that's something else that I'll do is I'll start with one idea but as I'm carving I'll keep adding more detail of how it just like feels right to me. Um, but some people like sticking exactly to what they've drawn so it's always open to everybody's um, everybody's liking of it for sure. But yeah, even rolling a little bit of ink over what I have here will really show me what um, is being picked up on the image and then what I need to add more uh, detail and depth in. Um, I think I'll do a little bit more just up here and then I might do a test, a test print just so we can have folks see it. So the test print of mine would not show the complete picture because yeah. it would show what's there than yeah, I know Yeah, what where. you've already been carving there. Um, nice, we have another question. Where do you get the tools and linoleum or foam you're carving into? Do you teach at Studio Central how to do this? Uh, we have it for a while, we would really like to. So maybe um, in the next month, sometime in February, if there's an opening um, and we have materials for it, I can definitely teach that. 
does definitely take a little bit longer of a process, so it might have to be one of those like two-parter workshops, as you can tell with how long we're taking on our carvings here. Um, but uh, this pink rubber that I'm using, you can get Speedball brand, and that can, you can pick that up at Michael's or Artist Emporium. Um, and this material here as well, you can also pick this up at Artist Emporium. Um, I picked up this one that is like the harder to carve into. I got this on Amazon myself. It just kind of, oops, comes in about like uh, 9 by 12 or 8 by 10 sheets. Um, this one as well I got on Amazon. It came in, came in a pack of 10 and had a tool, not these speedball tools. It had um, just a generic brand. And I believe those all together was around like 20 or 24. So, but with that, I'm getting about 10 of these pieces. So I could cut this in half and then make multiple smaller ones, or you can have a whole image on it too. So um, that's the sort of the variety of it. I'll show as well as Kate's still carving away at her piece mm -hmm. of it there. Just as I'm kind of talking a bit about this, I'll show an example of one that I had before we paused, but um, hopefully I answered your question, Leona, and if I didn't, uh, you can ask that I can continue to, to chat about that. But what I was saying is that where I purchased and picked up these um, pieces from, just showing here to bring us up closer what I have done so far. Um, I have the inside of the eye cut out and then I have the iris done and the pupil. I haven't done anything up here with the eyelashes or not. So I don't want to get too much ink on this just because I still want to kind of keep that form. But I can run a little bit of ink on it. Um, and what I was saying is that I got these in a pack of 10 on Amazon. You can either use the full piece or you can cut an image. So I have this to show just in case I didn't finish this drawing what the print is. So I have this bird that I've cut out in the past and you can see it's smaller than here. So what I actually did was I pit the piece lower. So now I have this small bit of um, rubber that I'm able to make another smaller piece with. So I can kind of conserve and, and save um, different pieces of the linoleum. But I'll give this uh, an example of a test print for you folks so you're able to see the printing type. And then once Kate has done a little bit more of her cutting, I'll, um, we'll give her a little print in. So I'll just bring some items to use. And this will be the fun and slightly messy part of this, which is always the best. Okay, I need the thick one. Thick one? Mm -hmm. um, do I have it inside here? You may. I have this one. It's okay. like a bit thick. So I just take this out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I would need to... Okay, so I just put... This here. I never remember how to do it, so. Oh, no worries. I'm just thinking. Um, yeah. So with this, you can actually just loosen it up a bit. So mm -hmm. I'll put these two pieces back together. Uh huh. With this over. Uh huh. And, we'll and then I put it inside. Yeah. So you'll go. It'll. Um, you'll put it in from the top. So it kind of like jiggles around uh -huh. in there. Uh huh. So you can take this and just on the spot that it, there's room. So not that side, but it goes in there. And then you can twist this down and it puts right. it into place. So make sure you lock it into place before trying to use it. <laughs> All right, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, just showing you folks here something I always like doing prior to testing it on, like, say, a cardstock or anything. Um, I have just construction paper printed, and these work really well for test prints just to see how it'll respond to the paper. The one thing is, is that papers come in all different thicknesses and like grains too. So this paper might um, print differently than say this one here, which is like a more flat craft cardstock paper. We'll try both just to show the differences. Um, what I have here are, I have two ways of printing. The first way I did this print actually before is I wanted to see if I could use just a large ink pad. Um, and I didn't have a roller, which these are called 
sprayers. They're a printing term. It's like a little um, rubberized stamp roller that you can use to spread ink. Also, you can use this to spread pressure if you don't have a printing press, which is what we're gonna do today. This, um, what I did before is I just kind of like took my print, I stamped it in, and then I tried to stamp it with my hand. That actually works a lot better if you do have a backing to it, so you can kind of hold and have a better pressure on there. But I'm gonna show you folks the printing style with kind of like a tube of ink. Um, I don't have any blacks, but I have reds, blues, and a brown. So maybe let's do a brown. See how that looks. And this is wa block watercolor. Um, so with it saying water, I'm going to assume that it is water based. So if I get it on myself, I can clean it. <laughs> That's what I'm assuming. <laughs> we'll see if it works. So I could always mix another one of these colors in with it too, so we can see the um, sort of like a pattern with it. But with brown, I don't know if it'll work out too well. So I'm not going to do this. <laughs> but what I'll do is I will take um, a brayer. What I normally do, because I'm going to be rolling out a bunch, I take one that's not squeaky. So this one, squeaky. I don't want it. <laughs> Put that one off the side. <laughs> this one. Not as bad. Oh yeah, that's a good one. I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna grab two. This bigger one is I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this clean, and this is the one I'm gonna put on the back when I'm rolling it. Um, so here I'm gonna take the one that I've chosen that's not as noisy, and I have a little bit of ink that I've put on there. I'm gonna take this. Hopefully that is enough. It might not be. And I'm going to spread it out. Ooh, that looks delicious. <laughs> mm. Maybe I'll add some red because it looks like chocolate pudding. Yeah. I hope the red doesn't make it look worse. It might. <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll see. I'm adding red to the chocolate pudding color that we've made. Oh god. It's okay. It's like a nice-ish red. Um, so here I'm <laughs> like that was horrendous. <laughs> we have a darker red. Um, so I'm gonna keep rolling up. Excuse me. Oh, a smell. Oh. Oh, oh does oh. it smell? Oh, yeah. Oh, yummy. Oh. <laughs> So I'm um, rolling this, making sure that my bear is all covered in the color I want. I'm doing red. You do want to make sure that you have paper down because um, I'm going to put this love here. Um, and I'm going to put this here and I'm going to roll it. And I don't want to roll like the table that I would have underneath. So once I have my ink, I'll take this and roll it um, up. Make sure I get it covered. And roll it the other way too, just so we can really make sure we have everything covered though that actually looks quite nice i love this bird it's so beautiful so once i have it completely rolled here and it looks like everything's covered now you can do this where you put just this down have that down put the um, paper on top or you can do it vice versa we're going to try with just the paper on top so I'm going to try and eyeball to make it even-ish in the middle. And if it's not, I'll just um, crop it. Now I'll take my bigger one and roll so I can get even pressure on the print. And I'll try my best not to have it slide around underneath. Because as soon as it starts sliding, um, the picture is going to be all not how you want it to be. <laughs> So I've rolled that, and now we will do the pull release. Oh, oh. beautiful. Look at that. Awesome. Oh, I love it. Really well, pretty. Yeah, that brown on brown paper would be really weird. <laughs> <laughs> it would have. <laughs> it would have been really bad. <laughs> but now that I've done that, I can show again where I've made one print, but I'll add more ink to my roll. Add more ink to here. 
because I want to see if the next one we do, if it'll look the same or it might look a little bit different. Because that's the fun of print making is that you never know really what color is going to come out of it. Um, so again, I'll try and just think that it's even in there and I'll roll here and again there. Um, there's other tools you can use. Now this is a little bit of a weird shape, so it's going to look funny when I'm kind of holding it down and I don't want to like bend the paper too much. Um, but um, what you can do as well is I lost my train of thought, but oh sorry, when you are rolling it square, it's a lot more sturdy and won't have it falling around as much. But that one, yeah, it's very similar. Very, very similar. Actually, it's pretty uh, uniform with how it inked. It looks the same to me. It looks the same to me, too. Which That's impressive. Is, That's a first. It's a good friend. It's a good, it's a good it's friend. A good friend. Yeah. So we have that. And then just to show you folks as well, um, I'm going to just put some ink on what I have currently here just to do a test print. But I'm not going to use the same paper that I was inking on prior. I'm going to do just a piece of scrap paper here just to see how it's going. So I will add, I might be fine with the amount of ink that's on it. We might have to add a bit more for Kate's if we want to do a test for that. Uh, yeah, let's try and see. Because I did not remove the bigger areas yet. Mm -hmm. So to see that, it's easier to take a, to make to a make thing. a thing on it. Yeah, I need um, a little bit more ink before. So. Mm -hmm. We might just go straight red with this one. Red. Oh, you know what? No, let's go wild. I'll add some blue. Blue and red. Purple. Ooh. Can I put the cap back on? No. <laughs> <laughs> this is a. This will be a very fun thing to do too because we mix brown and red. Um, Leona says, "Can you use any surface to roll your ink on?" You can. Um, the best one is something that is. Uh, smooth. So here I have a piece of plastic. It's just acrylic. Um, so if you have a smooth piece of something like a palette that doesn't have paint kinked on it, you can do that. Also what I've done, if I'm kind of not wanting to um, clean the mess afterwards, I've actually wrapped it in saran wrap. Not saran wrap. Tin foil. Tin foil. You could use saran wrap by two, I guess. Uh, but I've wrapped maybe. it around tin foil and taped it. And then that way even if it's still on like a table or something, but that way I still am just doing it on a mostly flat surface. Um, I'm just gonna wipe my hand. All right, so I have the blue and the red. We're gonna do a little bit of a mix. And something like this, I could either keep the blue all on one side, or how it's like kind of mixing to be like this like purplish color. It's like quite dark. We'll see how it works. It's mostly gonna be like a purple. <laughs> it's fine. So with my eye, I don't want to cover again too much because I still want to see that top. But even thankfully you can see that. That um, brown was the best color, really. I'm going to put this on top and see if anything transfers. The red is and the blue are a little dry together. Oops. See how that turns out. So we'll see the eye. Oh, and we got that coming off of what I've just done. Wow. Yeah. It looks amazing. So we have the eye cut. I like how I like how the iris turned out. Um, but I don't have anything else cut out from it yet. So there's a lot more that I'll add to it. Um, so I just inked that one half. And the ink I was using was a little bit drier. Uh, that can either be due to there's older ink on the brayer that I'm using, but this is showing how those two bird prints that I pulled first off were very light, but now because I haven't had a chance to wash it off, 
uh, my brayer even, it's spreading the ink out more thin. So I can kind of show you the variety of how prints are done. Um, but yeah, so that's mine. Kate, how are okay, you doing? Do you want to try, so try not, it? Hey, I, I'm definitely not done yet, yeah. but I will see what comes out and see sure. what. Sure. Well, maybe, maybe I'll add, give it a couple slaps, nice. Because yeah. I did not uh, thicken the lines yet, yeah. so I can see the basic, what I can go from, or I could, I might like it. Even. Yeah, you might. Know. Well, maybe let's just add a brown to that, because I think that color added, it works nicely. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll add it, and I'll use a fresh brayer. Oh, it's just cool. Oh. Color. <laughs> I'm trying to mix it with the purple, so at least it's like purpley poo. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, we're going to things that do not exist. <laughs> yeah, we are. Um... I don't know if it looks good, but again, I am not. It's a, a test print, right? That's the yeah. most important. It's know. not the medium I'm. I can be ever confident with right you, now. Right now, that is the right key word, now, everyone. Yeah. I yeah, I fixed it right away because I think I might advance in this. Yeah. Because what I did before was just a big shape, mm -hmm. and so I never tried anything like sure. that. Sure. So let's see. Let's see. All right. Should we print it on brown? No, probably not. Uh, we could print it on this uh, the white that we were doing before. Yeah, not the white, sorry, this yellowy paper. Yeah, we can try. Why not brown? Why not? Why not? Why not? All right. Uh, we can try. We can try. Ready? So you'll ink. Okay. This side that you carve. Okay. <laughs> so you'll so. roll the ink on where you've been done the carving. Ooh. Okay, Maybe so more. Maybe add some more ink on there. Yeah. That's really beautiful. See, it's got a squeaky. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. So then go um, horizontally so to the other way. So this way I yeah. will go other yeah. direction. Yeah, go the other direction so you can get some more ink on there. And then I could just keep this area simple. Yeah, simple. And then when I cut out the other part, mm -hmm. that would be. Yeah. Is it enough? It should be. Here's not going to print um, fully black if you want, or brown. That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. I just don't understand this area. Yeah, Was know. it wet or something? Could be a lake. It's a lake, yeah. Oh, well. There's some lakes over there. Okay, so let's try. Okay, then so what we'll I... do is we'll add this paper. So we'll some... put it on top and then yeah. turn it upside um, down. You can actually just roll directly like this. So take or this. Roll on top. And yeah, okay. you can push with the roller. Be gentle and don't roll over your finger or mine. Yep. Marisa, where's your finger? Right, put here. It he right here. Right here. No! <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's right here. Why do you want it? Don't roll over my finger. Oh, God. Okay, here's the end. Yeah, and then you can go again um, the other way, too. Then I can sure. try this yeah. direction. And you always want to make sure you're not pushing it too at the edge so you don't like it um, getting mm. it pulled. Oh, okay, <laughs> so that's a tip. So what happens to the edge if I pull So if you push it too much, your um, print may slide if it's not connected well enough on there, and then you'll have your image will be um, smudged a bit. No. no, no. No smudge in the image. I think we're good. We can pull it. Ready? Let's try. Oh my. Ooh, it looks like something. <laughs> it does look like something. I think it's gorgeous. <laughs> Thank look you. Look at that. It's almost like um like a purpley brown. <laughs> it was. It turned out to be a purpley brown. So these things here, uh -huh. I'm pretty sure that those lines are from um, this is what cut off from here. Yeah, which what cut off. So stuff. some of those yeah. could be stuck under there. Yeah. But that's kind of the cool thing is that this is the very first print of that. Mm -hmm. And you can continue to see with washing both of these using different colors and adding to that how this image will evolve. So you can keep this as like test one and then you can keep going adding more. That's the really cool part about um, printmaking is that fun. That's just kind of like you've had your own image that's popped up there. That's awesome. great. So fun. Oh yeah, and look at that. We've done it that we made it mostly on time. <laughs> Almost on time, which means we're a bit late. A bit late, but hey, late. <laughs> we were a bit late starting. We had a fire alarm. We're here now, we've done some beautiful work. Um, so that is kind of like a full on crash course of printmaking. It's such a, it's more of a complex thing to do in just one session, but you saw 
um, what we've done, and Kate has a very, like, a large landscape that she's working on, where I'm working on more of, like, an eye, but it's, like, a bigger thing. I'm going to try and make it a little bit more detailed. But you did get to see the printing portion of it. So I think Kate's going to work a little bit more on hers, and we will post some pictures of either our finished pieces or works in progress from the session today. And otherwise, if you are trying this out, um, trying it out on a potato, trying it out on whatever you have at home, styrofoam, um, send us some pictures of it, either in the comments down here or you can, oh thanks, comments down here or you can um, add it to uh, Artbeats Creative Community or Facebook, that's great, post them there. But um, until then, me and Kate are going to sign off. It's a pleasure seeing you. Wait for it to dry a little bit. I'll continue working on it and see what I can do because now it's more visible. Yeah, yeah, and that's the good thing too. You know yeah. what's visible. Yeah. Um, this is by my face and it's very smelly. I love it. Not the, not the smell. No. <laughs> the way it turned out, I love how it turned out. Woo, thank awesome. you. We'll see how it turns out more later on. We'll see maybe... I don't know. I might have to keep working on it. I might have to take a break from it. That's what life is. Though. Also, uh, usually uh, we do not have a lot of liner cuts. Now we have a liner cut that is on for sale. And that's yeah. from one of the artists in the last group that graduated. Yeah, that's true. Uh, well. It is not physically in the store. It's in Artbeat Studio. So if someone wants to purchase the original liner cut, it's uh, contact Artbeat Studio or... Um, a bit artworks. Yeah, we don't come sorted. Go on the website and check the prints. Mm -hmm. And the print uh, that is there, I'm not sure if I sent it. I think I did send it to the store. Uh, but it says there is a print and there is an original line of cut available as well. Nice. Well, have a peek at that. Come over to Upbeat Artworks sometime. Check out some artwork. Check out some of our prints that we have here or brand new work from the latest group of art. So, which is awesome. It's beautiful. I need to go. I need to get out of here. Otherwise, I'll buy everything. Kidding. <laughs> Kidding. Okay. Well, it's true. It is it's true. true. <laughs> it's hard to be here. <laughs> now we're just looking at ourselves in the camera. So we should say bye. Bye, Kate. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Bye. Happy Friday. Friday. bye.